The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. Next on Life Today, Michael Todd encourages us all to dive into the purposeful life of trusting God for the impossible. We can all look at our lives and look at the facts like, oh, I'm too young, I'm too this, I'm too that. And God says, you don't need facts to walk by faith. You actually need crazy faith to, <laughs> to actually do something that goes beyond the facts. And that's what I'm excited to share because it really is my life story. Welcome to Life Today. I'm Randy Robinson. Sheila is here as hey always. Guys. And Sheila, now you know that I lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma for about 10 years off and on. It's my sort of second home. I love the town. And there is a fabulous church in Tulsa called Transformation Church. And it's just blown up. I got tons of friends that go there. They speak highly of it. And we have the pastor of Transformation Church with us today. He's also authored a new book called Crazy Faith. And we are excited to have Michael Todd on Life Today. Man, what a pleasure to be here with you guys. Thank you so much for having so me. So we're going to try to get this in because we got lots of great questions. Yeah, but, let's go. But this is a great topic. Now, Sheila, you've, you've got your like list of questions. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, let, let's get into this. I, I just, first of all, I want to ask how you would define, how do you unpack crazy faith? What is that? Well, I believe that the one thing that God calls every believer to have is faith. And when I, when I look at all of the stories in the Bible and I think about Noah and Abraham and David and all of these people, they didn't just have common faith. They had crazy faith. They had to believe God in a situation that did not look like it was probable, like it was able to happen, like it was anything that anybody else had done. I think about Noah building an <laughs> ark and it hadn't rained yet. What type of insanity do you have to be living sure. in to convince your sons and their families and tell your wife every morning, hey babe, going out to build this ark <laughs> for the, you know, but it's one yeah. of those things that it was only crazy until the first drop of rain started to happen. Right. And what was counted as crazy in one season became the thing that he was known by, a man of faith. Mm -hmm. And I just believe in this day and age where the world is getting darker and darker yeah. and people are getting more skeptical and they believe in Google more than they do God, they want certainty and they, they don't want to have any mystery or any uh, a place where they have to believe God. I believe that the key to revival, the key to us seeing the next move of God is a group of people, a remnant group of people mm. believing God in crazy faith. You know, one thing you do say that I really liked, and you mentioned Google there, that's where we go to to get the facts that we want. Yeah. But you say the facts that we want can actually get in the way yeah. of the faith that we need. I, I say it like this, they erode. The facts that erode, we want that's right. erode the faith that we need. We all need faith to do the things, to be a mother, to believe for that business, to be able to just not hurt nobody. <laughs> like on the road, like we, we, need, we need our faith in God to be strong. And a lot of times because we want facts, we, we stop believing that God can, he will, and he desires to do something amazing through all of us. And I just remember so many times in my life where if I would have stopped at the facts, the facts that I was a young black man leading a multi-ethnic church, yeah. the fact that I didn't have the education that they said that I needed, the fact that, I mean, just fact after fact, and we can all look at our lives and look at the facts like, oh, I'm too young, I'm too this, I'm too that. And God says, you don't need facts to walk by faith. You actually need crazy faith to, <laughs> to actually do something that goes beyond the facts. And that's what I'm excited to share because it really is my life story. Okay, let me just ask right up here. What's the difference between crazy faith and just plain crazy? <laughs> <laughs> that God is leading you that way. Yeah. So, so, so a lot of people do crazy stuff, but um, I believe that God leads us in a direction. The Bible says the steps of a good man, good woman are ordered by the Lord. I believe he begins to nudge us in ways that, that seem completely crazy to our natural senses, our natural mind, our circumstances, even our situation. How I'm here today and I'm a pastor of a church and my past and my back, that's 
crazy, but God was nudging me mm -hmm. in a direction. And I had to have the faith to say, this may seem crazy, but I'm going to take this step of faith. And that's why some of y'all are just crazy. Let me just be very clear. Some of the stuff you're doing is just crazy. But when you pray and you get in that quiet time and you feel God nudging you yeah. in a certain way, it may still be crazy, but if he's there, if God be for you, who can be against you? Yeah, and I think that's important. I think the, if anybody could take away one anchoring fact from what we're talking about with the faith is that you have to hear from God yeah. first. Or you're going to be out there by yourself. Yeah, and, <laughs> and that's and, crazy. And, he, <laughs> and he'll rescue you, but mm -hmm. the, 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 the scars, the pain, the trouble, the t trauma, that you might have to go through is unnecessary. And mm -hmm. I tell people, that's why you, you have to ask God. That's why it's so important. That scripture, I'll say it again, the steps of a good man are ordered. I think about going to a drive through Like the only reason they know to get my order at the window is that I ordered it. God wants to tell you, speak to you. He, hey, I'm mm -hmm. ordering right, you. Right. This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And that's how we get the intended result. So yeah, doing crazy faith stuff without God is just plain crazy. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I find really moving about your story is the way that in that particular area of Tulsa, where the blood of Christ is now redeeming the blood that was shed so many years ago and yeah. one of the worst things that ever happened in our nation. Yeah, so Talk about how you came to be there. So in 1921, there was a horrible race riot um, on Greenwood. Um, it was a very affluential um, African-American area um, that impacted the whole world. And um, because of some racial tension, there was a massacre that happened there where basically the entire neighborhood was burned down. And um, to this day, there's a, like a quarter of a mile strip that stands from this affluential community in town. Well, when God called me to be a pastor, and that's a whole nother story for a whole nother <laughs> day, the church she asked me to pastor was a church titled Greenwood Christian Center after the race massacres. It was in the hood in this area and it was started by a white pastor mm -hmm. who God told to go to that area and help reverse the curse. Mm -hmm. So 16 years later, Pastor Gary and his beautiful wife, Debbie, hand this crazy dude the baton and say, now you're supposed to wow. lead this. And God told me four things. He said, this church is supposed to be multi-ethnic, mm -hmm. multi-generational, multiplying, and multi-campus. We were none of those things. There was about 300 people that came to the church at that time. And that was 2015. And what God has done since then is everything that he said he was going to do. He made wow. it all of those multis and now we get to spread the message and give God glory and see reconciliation yeah. in a place there, where there was so much devastation. And we're just grateful to God for that. Uh, you know, and that, that's special to me because, you know, being in Tulsa, I used to go to the Greenwood Jazz Festival yep. every year. Yep. You know, I know that area and I've seen, I've seen how it's, it's improved so much over the last 30 years. But beyond that, um, there's still there's still some north and south uh -huh. division, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but what's what, what the world is telling us right now is that the black and white can never really. Oh no, that's not true. They just right? need to come to Transformation Church on the right, Sunday. Right, right, right. <laughs> so we they we seem a little crazy by going. No, look, we got all the answers right here in the Bible. Love yeah. your neighbor as yourself. You know what love looks like? Let me walk you through that in Paul's letters too. Well, the, the you're key expressing to that, it. Yeah, to, the key to that is making something bigger than race the thing that brings us together, and that's Jesus. That's right. And and so for us. Um, number one, you got to be open to it. I openly declared that our church would be a multi-ethnic church. <laughs> and many pastors, whether you're white, black, Hispanic, th it feels comfortable just having people that are like you. That's sure. the easiest sure. way to go. But I, we intentionally said from day one that this is going to be a multi-ethnic church. And the craziest thing is to see white people who've never been to North Tulsa lined up off the highway wow. to get to our church <laughs> and to come in and their first experience is now with people who somebody looks like a gangbanger, somebody is a bank owner, somebody um, work, bags groceries, and the other person is, is a car dealer, mm. and they're all serving on the same team. Yeah, I love that. It That's it. changes the yeah. perspective, and now people get to see 
what they don't know is possible and it becomes possible because there's an example of it. Mm. And so um, today, Transformation Church is one of those places that is more diverse in, uh, than any place in Tulsa that I go mm. on uh, during the week. And I'm grateful to be in such a healthy community. Yeah, I sometimes wonder if people would feel a little intimidated by the title Crazy Faith, but but then you unpack it in such a helpful way, um, Michael, because you talk about 51% is enough. Yeah. Talk about that. So I, I, I talk about this concept of maybe faith, mm. and I'm probably gonna mess up some pastors and preachers' uh, whole theology right here. <laughs> But people always ask me, like, how do you know it's God? I want to be sure it's God. Sure. And, and I just tell them, you don't know. <laughs> like, there is a part of walking by faith that is maybe. Yeah. Like, it'll prove to be God yeah. or it'll prove to be a lesson. Mm -hmm. But what you have That's to good. do is you have to walk. And many believers are paralyzed at the start because they want certainty that it's going to work. Right. Mm. And there is nothing in the scripture that talks about certainty except that we're going to die and we're going to be in heaven if we accept Jesus. Like that's the only thing that is certain. And so for me, I, I live my life by this philosophy of 51% faith. If I'm 51% sure it's God, I'm going. <laughs> not 90%, not 75%. If I'm 51, I just need to be 1% past my doubt, 1% yeah, past right, my right. fear, 1% past my ambition. If I know it's God, I'm going to go and people's like, well, what if it doesn't work? I said, the grace of God yep. is so amazing. Yeah. When that scripture says that all things work together for the good of those who mm -hmm. love, them, love him and are called, I thought it was God. And the thing that, that people don't realize is even if it wasn't God, even if I missed him in prayer, even if it was the wrong unction, maybe it was the ice cream I ate last <laughs> night and it wasn't the Holy Spirit, like even if it was that, God now knows that if he speaks to me clearly, he has somebody that'll go. That is so good. So you got you got four kids. And they're, four they're kids. Young. All right. Now, I, I, I'm on the other side of that. Mine are all in their 20s. So I'll, oh, just, I'll just warn you now, you're going to get some Father's Day gifts, <laughs> some birthday gifts, and some Christmas gifts that you don't want. Oh, gosh. But they think you want. Okay. But you're going to love those kids even when they bring you some, not I, what you literally, want. Literally, we're in the best time of our life, me and my wife, Natalie, we have four kids. We just had a new baby. Um, she's four months old right now, and um, everything's crazy at the top right, household right, right now. Right. So crazy faith, it wasn't written for anybody else. It was written for us yeah, <laughs> to be yeah. able to survive this season we're in right yeah, now. Yeah, but even when we miss it, we're, we're not, if our hearts turn towards God, he's got, man, he's got the grace. Mm. He's got the grace. I want to you to unpack this whole beautiful concept for our viewers at home, because crazy faith for you might mean believing for an incredible building in your city. Yeah. How would, what would crazy faith look like for a woman in her 40s, you know, who's just thinking, well, I would love to have crazy faith, but where do I start? Yeah, uh, crazy faith starts with baby faith. Like, That's what most good. people don't understand is, like, the big things that God does always start in seed form. Uh, let me just break it down clearly, and I don't want to give too much of the book away, but um, this whole story centers around 37 days after I became the lead pastor of Transformation Church. No seminary, a church that's voting if they want me to be there or not. <laughs> I don't know if I'm in the right, like, I'm completely like, I don't know if this is you, God. And 37 days after I became the pastor, I'm doing what I do every morning is spending time with God, praying, and, like, just asking God, please help me. Mm -hmm. And I hear this, this um, unction to get out a piece of paper and a notepad and start writing down. And I got my computer, and I started writing down, the Spirit Bank Event Center will be Transformation Church. And I have a piece of paper that I went to Google, and I... I Googled the Spirit Bank Event Center. I'd been in the building one time, yeah. and and I spelled transformation wrong. On <laughs> like I, I like I literally have the document that that I put there, and I believe God was telling me all these things. It was completely crazy, mm -hmm. but what I had at that moment was baby faith. Right. I had enough faith to write it down. And there are so many people that are watching this right now, and I don't know who you are, but the first step that you have to do is write down what God's saying. Write the vision, make it plain. Do something that, seem, that won't cost you any money, that seems a little crazy, but do it now. For me, 
Nobody was rejoicing and clapping when I finished that document and hit save. <laughs> Nobody, my wife, I was like, babe, I wrote this down. She's like, yay. Like, it, there, was no, there was no fireworks because it would be five years wow. before this moment of crazy baby faith would turn into crazy faith. Wow. And I'm just encouraging that That's mother, so good. That, that, that business owner, that teenager, like, do the thing that you can do right now, and that may be just opening in the bank account mm -hmm. and titling it a uh, blessing fund, because you want to be able to bless other people, but right now, you need the blessing. Yeah. It may be um, taking a picture of your family who's been estranged wow. and putting them all together in a picture and writing Christmas 2022. Wow. It, it just may be getting a vision, and I tell people all the time, you got to see it before you see it. Yeah. And if you could get a vision, it could change the trajectory of everything that happens in your life. Yeah. So don't start at crazy faith. Yeah. Start with baby faith. But that's so good because if you if you don't do something, you'll never do anything. Come on. I mean, it's like you have to start with something. But the thing that I love about what you're saying is every single one of us, doesn't matter how old we are, doesn't matter how long we've known the Lord, we can all start somewhere. Well, the faith journey never stops. Mm -hmm. right. the, the, the thing that people think is, oh, I've been in church this many years. God's done these things through my life. Abraham and Sarah were walking in faith at 90 <laughs> and 100 years old. Right. I, I want you to think about, <laughs> like, like, what God is asking you to do. Like, and you know she had crazy faith to have a son at 90? Uh, that, like, come on now. Like, like, there was a lot going on there. And, and, and I just believe that many times we think God is done with us, mm -hmm. and he's just beginning. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's where I'm challenging every person that thinks they've seen the greatest miracles and seen God do the, um, the most amazing things in their life. No, 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 no. Let's go back again. What is he saying today? Yeah. What is he saying now? Because he's always trying to increase our faith. I love that. Was, was, when you were writing down this, this vision, and, yeah. and it did come to fruition. I remember seeing it in, in the Tulsa World, in the newspaper. It was crazy. And I, went, I literally was like, wow, that's crazy. Who is this guy, <laughs> right? But when you were when you were going through that process, how many times did, did you think maybe I am just crazy? Oh yeah, like every day. <laughs> like that's that's the thing. I didn't even when I was saying fifty one percent sure that that that's not fifty nine or seventy. Yeah. It's fifty one. Yeah. I, because it's hard sometimes to do things that you've never seen anybody else do. Yeah. Right. And that's I believe true. that. Many times, you know, I heard it said that uh, once a world record is broken, that it, in the next month or two, five or six other people break the world record. Yeah. But it can be standing for years until somebody does it. Right. And I believe that God wants some more people that break records, hmm. people that shatter and break the glass ceiling, it's people that, that, that make the leap forward so other people can make right. the leap forward. Right. And I believe that he's no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. I believe that if you have the faith to be able to trust that God could potentially do it through you and be able to go, like uh, um, the scripture says, like, I believe, but help my unbelief. Right. Like right. that was the right. prayer that I kept having to pray. Yep. It's like, I, I believe you, Lord. But help my unbelief, right. and God is okay with mm -hmm. that prayer. And that's why I've been able to continue on this journey of crazy yeah, faith. Yeah. So the book is called Crazy Faith. It's only crazy until it happens. <laughs> You're going to want to get hold of this book for yourself. You want to get hold of this book for your teenager. Um, this is a big vision in a doable way. But first of all, we would like to help you to help us carry out a big vision in a doable way. Right now, even as we're sitting here in the comfort of a studio in Texas, there are some mothers who are struggling to get their children to a malnutrition clinic because they haven't been able to provide one single bowl of food for their children. I've met some of these mothers. I've met them on their knees praying, God, if you still hear me, will you please send some help? Well, the great news is we get to do that. So please, would you watch this? We've met a lot of moms um, on our trip to Angola, but I have to tell you, Mariana's story has touched me so profoundly. Chavalia Munjala, Mumaguti, and Dango, and Jariacho, Wagapel, and Getinda, Divanyang, and Gusua, Kukwetiale, Kukwetiale, Ochomala, and Jalaivaria, and Japopo Suyacho, Yupisa, Opi, 
She said that when she goes to bed at night, she just, she lies there and she said, honestly, she wishes she could just give up. You know, she feels such despair, but she said, I can't give up because I've still got three children who need me. But when she only has a little bit of food, she makes sure that she gives it to all three of her children. And many nights, this mom goes to bed with nothing. <laughs> nothing in her stomach. Just a prayer on her lips. Lord, will you send me some help? Maybe you think, well, how can we change her life? It's really easy through mission feeding. Can you imagine the burden that it will take off this mom knowing that her kids get one good meal every single day? It's not a lot to ask. You know, some of the time with Mariana on that trip, we didn't talk, we just sat together. Because I just felt like we're just two mothers who've been placed in very different situations. I've never had a moment when I thought, what am I gonna give my son to eat? It's always been there, it's always been easy. And she's no different than me. She just happens to have been born in a different part of the world. And the drought there has been so drastic that even the little bit of crops they did have, They've produced nothing. I mean, I watched her literally with her hands scraping in the dirt to see if there was anything she had missed. I mean, can you imagine what that's like? I mean, it would break my heart. I can't imagine how you want to even go on. I understood when she said some nights, I just, I want to give up because she wakes up to that every morning. But here's what I love about what we do. James and Betty, from the beginning, their whole vision from God was, we're not going to blow into a country and like, here we are, we're here to save you all. They said, no, let's look at who God is already using in that nation and let's underwrite their work. And that's what mission feeding is all about. That we go in and we'll set up these feeding programs in schools. So the children will come to school, they'll get a great meal and they'll break that cycle of poverty that goes from generation to generation. We can do this. We need to do this. It's our joy and privilege to do this. And if we do it together, we literally can change the world one mother, one child at a time, Randy. We can, and you know, Sheila, I think it's important for people to know that the, the people that we're helping, this is emergency food situations. These are, you mentioned the drought. Uh, that's what they were facing. These are people who work every day to sustain themselves. But when circumstances that they cannot control come in and you've got a three month, six month, maybe a year or two long drought, that's when the situation gets bad. And that's where we step in. This is not a uh, forever type of thing. This is where we go in, where is the need great? How much can we do? How can we sustain them until they're on their feet again? We sustain them with your help. $30 will help feed three children for three months. $50 will feed five children for three months. You, you see $100, 10 children, $1,000 will feed 100 children. This gets them through as they're going to school, as they're working the fields, as the rains come back or the floods recede, whatever the situation is. This is where we step into that gap and we give them life. I hope you'll go online or go to the phones right now and make the best gift you can because there are people in need right now and they're praying for help. And you are that answer to the prayer. Join us in Mission Feeding. Let's save lives. Do it now and give the best gift you can. Across the continent of Africa, children are suffering, facing severe malnutrition and even death. With food reserves gone and many areas experiencing severe famine, we urgently need to replenish supplies to keep feeding the 350,000 children who are counting on us. Call now with your life-saving gift of 30, 50, or $100 to help feed and care for three, five, or 10 children for three full months. 
Also, please consider an extra gift to help immediately rebuild malnutrition clinics destroyed by record flooding in South Sudan. This urgent need is $392,000 above our normal feeding budget and is critical to help save the lives of those who are suffering most. With your gift of any amount, we'll send you Christmas Grace. This eye-opening new 31-day devotional will give you a fresh perspective on the greatest gift ever given and the life-transforming hope found in Christ's birth. With your gift of $100 or more, request the Love and Thanks Tumblr set. With scriptures reminding us that God's love never fails and to always give thanks, these tumblers will keep drinks hot or cold wherever you go. Finally, with your gift of $1,000 or more to help feed and care for 100 children, be sure to request our inspiring bronze sculpture, Divine Servant. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. Randy, Sheila, I'm appealing to your hearts because I know your heart. I know your heart for the children of Africa. Sheila, I know your heart for the mothers, the mothers that do everything they can to save their children's lives, but many times they can't simply because they don't have the resources. That is what our malnutrition clinics in South Sudan are doing. That is why it's so critical that we complete this project, that we finish rebuilding all 16 of these clinics and reach each and every one of those children. Please, Randy, Sheila, ask the friends of life to give the very best gift they can give today because their gift truly will be the gift of life. Isak is so right, and man, I appreciate his work. Sheila, we've built back many of these clinics, but there are more to go, and I just pray whatever you can do, you would help us continue to rebuild those clinics. And Sheila, I'd love to have everybody pick up Michael's book. Yeah, absolutely. For any gift at all, please say, I want crazy faith. Let's start with a little bit of faith and let it grow and let it grow until we can all say, because of Jesus, we have crazy faith. So Michael, thank you so much for being with us. It was awesome. Oh, this is my pleasure. I'm, I am excited for what is going to happen as people start moving in crazy faith. Amen, absolutely. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again next time here on Life Today. Regardless of your net worth, estate planning benefits you and your family before and after death and results in peace of mind. As a free service to our friends and partners, Life Planning Services, a ministry of Life Outreach International, can help with your estate planning needs and chart your financial future. Don't put off this important step to peace of mind through better planning. Contact Life Planning Services today. Tomorrow on Life Today, best-selling author and speaker Sheila Walsh helps you learn how to start holding on when you've messed up and life comes crashing down. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.